Hey everyone, welcome back to the Krusty Krab where we are going over every single Material UI component. In today's video, we're going to be talking about one of the new components in Material UI V5, the skeleton component. Now this component is one of them that is pretty cool that I think flies under a lot of people's radars and you can use this in your application in a number of different ways, but most of all, it just looks cool if you have a bunch of loading states in your application or let's say you're pulling a lot of data from the API that might keep the user waiting for one or two seconds. And if you find value in this video, make sure you leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm and I'll try to respond to every single one. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that notifications bell if you want to see more reacting material UI content in the future. So let's jump straight into this component. Essentially, the skeleton component is sort of like what it mentions in its name where it is meant to be sort of the paid skeleton when no data is there. So let me show you a quick example of it. You can see that it sort of just looks like this flashing shape. And in essence, that is what it is. And if you scroll further down, you get some better examples. I like this one in particular. For example, let's say on your website, you are showing a card. And I also have a video on the card component. So if you're not familiar with them, make sure you check that out as well. But let's say, for example, we are showing a card in our, vi in our website. Now, sometimes the data for those cards might take a bit of time to load in. And it looks a lot better if you show the skeleton, the structure of the site, before it actually loads in to compared to, let's say, just a circular loading uh, spinner on the screen instead of any actual structure to the component. It sort of gives the user an idea that things are almost there and it sort of is more likely to keep them on the page and it feels just more congruent and more user friendly to the user. So you can see here they have a card and it first at first it looks like this is sort of one whole unit, but in actuality, when it comes to this skeleton component, there are three different shapes you can use. One is the circle shape, one is a text line, and um, you can see these two examples over here are text lines. And then the next one is a big rectangle. So what they've actually just done here, and I'll go through the code in just a second, is they just look at all the places where you might have an image or text or an avatar and replace them with the corresponding shape of skeleton. So now that we understand sort of what the skeleton is, let's go back and look at some code. So the first thing you have to know is the variant prop. All you have to do to make a skeleton is just pass in the component. You don't have to pass any children into it. And then in the actual component itself, you can pass in a variant. For example, if you pass in the variant text, it's just going to be a line. If you pass in the variant circular, obviously it's going to be a circle. And you can also pass in the width and height um, props to determine what you want the width and height to be. And if you pass in rectangular, it'll be a big rectangle that you can also pass in a width and height into. Now, for, by default, the animation is sort of like this pulsing thing that you see over here. You can also change it to like, as you see in this middle one, sort of like a wave. Um, and for that, all you do is pass in, pass in animation wave. By default, the pulse is uh, the default um, animation, so you don't have to pass anything in if you just like the default wave. And of course, you can just pass in uh, false for animation if you do not want an anim animation at all, which sort of looks weird. Every site that I've ever seen use the skeleton component, whether it's from Mutual UI or from some other UI library, always has an animation. So I don't know in what case you would want just the skeleton from. Now, as you can see here, we just have another example, but let's go back to our card example and look at how they did this. Now, if you remember from the card video, cards are pretty uh, basic to use. However, there are just some nuances with the header and in those nuances, like for example, if you have this header of the card and you have like a little action thing here and then you have an avatar and you have a title and a subtitle, you just pass those in as props instead of children. So if we scroll down to the code, you can see here's our card header and here is where the logic starts to come in. They have one variable called loading. And that loading variable, depending on whether or not you're using a very sort of complex tech stack on your architecture, like maybe Redux and Redux Saga, you might get the loading variable from there. And that loading variable just gets set to true if there's no data for the page yet. You might also be holding this loading component in, say, for example, the component state. If you are making an application where the user clicks something and then the component sort of goes into a weird loading state before it shows the data. So this loading um, is going to come from wherever it is you sort of uh, keep track of the data that is coming in and the data that is being processed. So it's sort of on you to keep track of this loading. But let's say you have, um, you know, that Boolean to show whether or not uh, the page is loading or not or whether you have data or not. All they've done is for the avatar, if it's loading, 
All they do is they pass in a skeleton component with the circular variant. And if it's not loading, they pass in the actual avatar. Simple as that. For the action, which is just this thing on the side, they don't actually pass in anything. As you can see, there's no real loading animation here because it's just an icon. So if it's loading, they just don't show the action at all. Then for the title, if it's loading, they just pass in a skeleton um, with the, uh, the um, where is it? Uh, just a regular skeleton. You don't have to pass in a variant because the text variant is the default. Um, they just have the animation uh, wave um, and then they set the height and the width. Um, and then the same thing for the subheader. If loading is true, uh, uh, they pass in the skeleton. If it's not true, they just pass in what the actual subtitle uh, would be. Then for the image, they do the same thing. Um, over here, if it's loading, they just pass in a skeleton where they set the height to 190. Now you'll notice instead of using the height prop, they're using the SX prop. And I have a great video about the SX prop. Make sure you check that out if you're not familiar with it. But essentially, it's just another way to pass CSS into your component. And the CSS they're passing into their component through this SX prop is just the height. So they could have done it either way. Um, and for here, all they're doing is setting the height and the variant to rectangular. And because they're only setting the height, the width will naturally conform to its container which is why you can see this rectangle takes up the entire card and then at the bottom obviously all we just have is a bit of text and what they do is they just pass in two skeletons uh, one with um, no width so it in encapsulates the entire width and one with 80% width so it sort of looks more counterintuitive that you know this is going to be a paragraph that might end short or something like that and when it comes to the actual skeleton component, it's as simple as that. You're just gonna make sure you have a loading prop to keep track of state. And then when loading is true, you use the skeleton and you just try to mold the skeleton to the shape of whatever it is you're replacing. And if not, you show whatever it is that you want to show to the user. Now there are a couple of cool things. For example, you can actually have um, uh, the actual skeleton components sort of infer what it is. The example they use for this is typography, which is pretty cool. And the difference here is you actually put the skeleton inside of the typography. So for example, if you have a header one, uh, which is a very big piece of text, um, you can uh, see if loading is true, then you put the skeleton component with nothing else in it. And if it's false, uh, if we're not loading, you put whatever it is you want to actually display. And in this case, they just pass in the skeleton and just some text if it's not loading. And you can see here that it actually conforms to the size of what that text would have been. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can also put it as a, you know, a couple of different things as a child. So for example, um, if you have a skeleton and you want to wrap the avatar, instead of making the variant circle and setting the height and the width, you can actually just pass in an avatar component um, and it'll infer the actual size of that. And I believe you can do that with a bunch of different ch children as well. It's not just avatar. So for example, if you have a card and you want the whole card to be replaced by a skeleton, you could probably pass that card in um, as well. And it will take the default dimensions of that card and go ahead and move that into a skeleton. Um, if you really wanted to, you could change the background color. So just by uh, targeting this SX prop, um, just like in other Mutil UI components, you can target the background color of it. Um, and you can change that to whatever you want. And then when it pulse, for example, the pulse will actually just be setting the opacity of the color from one to, uh, you know, maybe lower or higher, depending on where it starts. So for example, we set it to gray and you can see it just goes from gray to a bit of more light gray, which is in essence, just sort of modifying the opacity. And that's pretty much it for this material UI component. It's really simple to use. And I find it adds so much value. If you have an actual application where you're keeping track of loading state and stuff like that, and you want to replace just the basic loading space or uh, the loading bar. So if you found value in this, make sure you leave a comment. Uh, it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to learn more about cool components like this one and how they interact in React. And I'll see you guys in the next video.